Hi everybody, and I'd just like to talk about what uh, Marilyn talked about. Initially, um, when we planned Dr. Pi all then, there were two groups um, that came together beforehand. Uh, a group that more or less met on the internet, uh, inspired by the, um, uh, what was happening overseas, and then um, groups of us who were involved in the social movements. In particular, we are the university, um, people who have been involved in the uh, we allowed to roll out March and October the 1st, which was Mary led, uh, which built up a good coalition. And then uh, people like ourselves from the left, from men uh, and, and socialists. And one thing the social movement group um, put at the core that we wanted Occupy Auckland to actually address what, what Marma uh, what was talking about. That, um, I mean, me, myself, I grew up in land that was occupied was occupied by the British Army. I didn't ask my people whether they, they wanted that or not, right? And this economic system that rules in New Zealand never got consent from the people who originally lived here. So it's important that we uh, remember that. And uh, it isn't a clip-on. It isn't an additional extra. It's actually at the root of capitalism. It's at the root of this system. It's based on theft, based on murder, uh, based on blood. So it's not a trip on, uh, this is central uh, and to a movement, but I'll talk about that in, in great depth. Yeah. Um, so Occupy Wall Street, I suppose, was the kind of rebirth, I think, um, of, of something that we were seeing 10, 11 years ago in the Battle of Seattle, um, the Battle of Genoa, uh, where uh, many of us participated in what was called the anti-capitalist movement. And that movement was huge and really um, give a lie to the uh, old maxim, Tina, there is no alternative. Um, you know, there's a crisis of legitimacy, and capitalism and organizations like the World Trade Organization were defeated uh, by people mobilizing um, on the streets. But I think that early movement um, got derailed uh, by the events that happened in Afghanistan, Iraq, and 9-11, um, and people quite rightly, who are at the leadership of the anti-capitalist movement, mobilized uh, quickly, which was our duty to oppose that war. And uh, a mass movement was built a, a, against the, uh, uh, the war in Iraq. Um, however, uh, once that war went through, I think a lot of us uh, were disheartened, demoralized, and, and lost a bit of hope. So I was uh, very, very, very happy to see the next generation take up uh, where that battle had left off and take this war to the heart of the beast, right to Wall Street itself. Let's remember what Wall Street was originally. Wall Street was a slave market for millions of kidnapped Africans who were stolen uh, uh, as slaves. And this is the primitive accumulation of wealth that capitalism is based on. Whole scale rape of African people, of colonized people, their resources, their gold, their diamonds, their coffee, their uh, um, tobacco, you know, um, uh, uh, taken by murder and by blood. And that's what Wall Street was. Wall Street was a slave market, and today it's still a bloody slave market. But it's great to see um, the winds of the Sirocco that have blown from Tunisia, blown from Kaffir, now spreading all over into the Western world. But this revolt is now a revolt of our generation against our slave masters too. And look at the birthplace of Western democracy tonight in 12 hours time. The Greeks have had their referendum stolen from them. They will not get to decide uh, the, um, whether they can reject or not. And I know at the moment my comrades in Greece are mobilizing for the mother of all battles in 12 hours time in, in Athens. In Spain, we saw the indignance take to the streets of Barcelona you know, that George Orwell writes about in homage to Catalonia and it, at the time of the Spanish Revolution in the 30s. This is the smell of Europe today, right? Spain, Greece, Ireland, Italy, Portugal, all these countries have a general strike. France, right? And if Greece goes belly up, then there is every potential that the European Union, the Euro, will go belly up. And where will this crisis be then? So we're at very, very historic times. 2011 is a year of revolution. This isn't something you need to read about that happened in Petrograd in 1917. We've had a revolution in Tunisia. We've had a revolution.
revolution in Egypt. Yes, these revolutions are ongoing, but it is possible to have a revolution in our lifetimes. And now, people suffering in countries like Greece, in countries like Spain, in countries like the United States, where there's massive youth unemployment, 20-30%, where there's massive racism against immigrants, uh, indigenous people, where there are riots on the streets of London because of uh, a whole generation uh, being disenfranchised. People are talking, again, about revolution, right? From 68 to today, this word has come back. So I think it's very uh, uh, exciting times. However, our movement is broad. Not everybody in this movement is going to be a revolutionary. And I think this is worth uh, discussing about, the interaction of the different strands within the movement. And they're what I call the three R's. Uh, reform, refuse, or revolt. Now, reform, I think these three can actually be mutually reinforcing at this stage of the movement. For example, reform. Uh, one of the uh, things that the, the movement has been talking about is the Tobin tax, the 1%, the Robin Hood tax, the Hanahekka tax here in New Zealand. Some form of tax uh, on the banks, on, be they in Wall Street or be they here, and they're huge speculation, right? Now, you don't have to be a revolutionary to think we need to take a 1% tax on this huge speculation to stop 19,000 children dying of hunger every day, right? This is something we can actually do with a small uh, tax on these huge resources and that can have a huge reform, huge effect on, on human life. And there's a place for ideas like that in our movement, the, the, the Tobin tax, the high tax. Refuse, right? The camp itself down there is a kind of a little of a microcosm of a possible new society, right? Where you see people setting up their own cinemas, you see people setting up their own university, you see people setting up their own medic tent, their own kitchen, their own media, cooperative, right? And that's kind of a refusal of the, the, the kind of criteria that everything has to be for profit in the outside society. And there is worthy things in that refusal. But I think if we try to create islands uh, that are internal looking, that only want to create a little camp, but don't look out externally to involving people in the social movements that already exist internationally or here now to roll up, then that is just a utopia. That's an island of socialism that's doomed to fail. It needs to spread out. And I think the third one about revolt, that's what I'm inspired about because that's what happened in Tahir Square. The people didn't stay in Tahir. They moved the spirit out to the factories, to the universities, occupied their campuses, occupied their factories, got rid of their own bosses, and that battle is going on still to this day in Egypt and the Middle East and Greece and Spain. And that's where I think our movement needs to start going down. We need to start moving the movement out from the camps in, in the Octagon, in Aotea, in Civic Park in Wellington, uh, in Hadley Park, in Christchurch, and start connecting up with the people who are, who are fighting, who need our support. Uh, for example, we should occupy Martin. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Martin. 111 people, 111 workers and their families have been locked out by the meat company there for over a week now. These people are being starved into taking a 30% pay cut. Right? The Occupy movement all around New Zealand, in, in solidarity with the trade union movement as well, we should go down to a place like that where the 1% are trying to crush the 99%. We should blockade that in our thousands to stop any scabs getting in the gate, like the people did yesterday in Oakland. Did people see what happened in Oakland? The fifth biggest port in the United States of America was shut down by our movement and not a penny moved, not a container moved. This is what the 1% are terrified about. That we stop camping, and that we start moving, we start picketing, we start striking, we start actually breaking the system where it's forged, breaking the chains where it's forged, and that's where they make the profits. So there's 111 workers at the minute 
Besides that, uh, Martin, we need to occupy Martin. Stop the steps together. We need to occupy the hood. This is a slogan from black activists in Los Angeles and, and, and the Bronx who look at what's happening in, in Wall Street and go, yes, uh, you know, you're taking on the symbols of wealth, but what about where the battle is being fought? What about in the ghettos? What about where the poor live? How is this movement going to outreach uh, 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 to where the poor are? So this weekend, for example, I'm going out to Otara in South Auckland, and we're campaigning to feed the kids, right? Free food for the kids. Sounds uh, like a reformist uh, idea. That was one of the programs the Black Panther Party had in the late 60s. You know, revolutionaries who made sense. We need to have free education in our universities, right? That's why um, the people in the social movements, like we are the university, occupy the bell tower here for the first time in 15 years. What a sight to see. That was like planting that red flag over the right staff. So many people have been battling to get up there. And at last, you know, that symbol was taken. But this battle will continue in three months' time after the summer. We need to coordinate a nationwide day of action so that every university is occupied uh, in O week. And the O will stand for Occupy Week. Uh, that's where we need to go with this movement. What Martin has said as well, though, about um, the need for, for us to, to not have just on a clip on extra, but to acknowledge that the lands that we live in, like Canada, like Australia, like the United States, like New Zealand, that this is already occupied land. You know, that needs to be a very, very strong part of the movement here in Aotearoa as well. We've just had two tribes, two massive tribes, reject their settlement process. Tuhoi and uh, a, a lot of people in Nahu, right? This white tiny day, we should start talking about occupying the land again. And people should come in solidarity with Maori who are ready to occupy their land, right? In Tuhoi and in Nahu. So we should have people's backs. And I think that's the last thing that our movement needs to talk about, is does this movement need to deal with political ideas? One of the early arguments was those uh, people uh, who thought that this movement was not just apolitical, but anti-political. But I don't think you can have a revolution without grappling with political ideas. For example, I'm part of a movement called the Mana Movement, which does unite uh, Maori people, uh, workers, the poor, migrant workers, fighting trade unions. I think movements like that have a place and have ideas to offer uh, the movement. And one of the good things about uh, the movement in Auckland is there's not a political censorship of ideas in this city like, like in some others. And I think that's going to be an important thing as the Occupy movement uh, develops and deepens what form of representation, what organisations, lasting organisations, do we create um, for, for, from this movement. So that's where we are at the minute. I think that we need to look at how we um, spread this movement externally, because I think the state in New Zealand, the police in New Zealand and the government in New Zealand are running a strategy of attrition, right? They're running a strategy of siege, uh, hoping that people will become uh, more fractious, uh, more internally divided, uh, argue amongst themselves as the cats go on and on from week to week to week. And that's something that we don't want to happen. What we do want to happen is use these camps, use the occupied area as sites of struggle, sites of education, sites of, uh, of training, but use them as places and bases from which we launch struggles from over this summer. And let's make it a hot summer in the workplaces with lots of strikes. Let's make it a hot summer after Waitangi with occupations in Napui and Tuhoi land. Let's make it a hot autumn when we come back for a week and occupy the universities. And let's take the spirit, like we saw at the beginning of this year in the e e Egyptian revolution, and take Tahir from the squares, from the city centres, 
to the campuses, to the factories and to the land.